Is this small DS cartridge a better option than homebrewing your system in 2023? No, but it almost is, and let me tell you why. Recently, Nintendo decided it wasn't done screwing over its fan base and decided to put out a new update for the 2DS and 3DS line of consoles. Firmware version 11.17.0-50 is the first update since the 3DS was discontinued in 2020. And fortunately for Nintendo, this stability update conveniently pulled the rug right from under the homebrew community. At the date of this recording, until a workaround is found out, consoles with the custom firmware are in danger of being bricked as a result. However, if you're worried about your system, simply do everything you can to prevent an update. In the meantime, check out the 3DS Hacks Guide linked in the description because there are currently ways to homebrew and update your 2DS or 3DS. This guide is always the most relevant way to explore custom firmware. But if you are nervous about the new update, or maybe there are other reasons preventing you from homebrewing your system, you might want to consider this 482 in one that I picked up from AliExpress for $12. I know you may have a lot of questions like, are there really 482 games in there? How well does it work? Or is this better than homebrewing? Well, first let's go over what this thing is, some pros and cons, and then let's compare it to my homebrew 2DS. When I first stumbled across the listing on AliExpress, it was honestly too affordable not to buy. And with a promise of 482 games, I had nothing to lose. Well, besides money and maybe my credit card information. In any case, this landed on my doorstep a month later to my surprise, and when I popped it into my system, I did have all 482 games. Among many obscure DS games, some were actually mainline Mario titles. But I have to admit something, I already suspected that this thing would work. And let me tell you what it actually is by flipping it over. This is an R4 card, or an R4 card clone. And R4 cards were very popular when the DS homebrewing community first began to gain popularity years ago. Before the current hacks for the DS Lite and DSi, this was the only way to play game backups. You would load your custom firmware to an SD card and then slide it into the cartridge, which would then boot just like a regular DS game. In fact, I still have my original R4 card that I traded Pokemon Soul Silver for back in the seventh grade because my friend told me it had Minecraft on it. So when I first opened the case, I flipped it over, stripping away the mystery of how this thing even works. I popped the SD card into my computer to check and I was able to see all of the .NDS files. This means that if you wanted, you could drag the root of the SD card over to a larger micro SD and then boot from that card as well. In fact, I tried it out. I was very nervous about wrecking the entire thing since these cards can be temperamental. So how does this compare to the current homebrew custom firmware? Well, first I have to address what I'm sure many of you are screaming in the comments. That is a 2DS that plays 3DS games and the cartridge can only play original NDS games. Yes, I would have preferably liked to use a DS Lite or DSi for my demonstration, but my only DSi is currently shrekked out and the other is completely disassembled for another project. So I will only be comparing the cartridge to the Twilight menu interface on my 2DS and any other features that are available on the older DS line of custom firmware. While the homebrewing setup can take as short as seven minutes for the DSi, you can't argue that being able to take a DS cartridge and plug and play is much easier. In my opinion, I do not think the homebrewing process is inherently difficult, but you must understand that in some cases it can be for some people, and that's okay. There are also scenarios in which you can't homebrew. Maybe your camera is broken and you can't continue the process. I don't know. In any case, I'm gonna give the easy point to the 482 in one. What about the size capacity? Well, I've tested quite a large card with the 482 in one, but not to the extent of stuffing every single DS game into my homebrew 2DS. Check out the title card for that full video. I assume with how temperamental these cards are that pushing the limits will end up just corrupting the card. So for the average user where the 482 in one is enough games, I'd have to rule this a tie. As for compatibility, it appears that you can play every single game that the DSi homebrew can play. I also haven't noticed a change in performance, so I would also deem this a tie between the two. Themes are also available on both. However, as I showcased in my updated Shrek DS video, the customizability is much more comprehensive. The point goes to homebrew on this one. So as you can see, the R4 card is pretty comparable to just homebrewing your system. However, there are a few cons to consider. Some of these cards are pre-installed with a time bomb procedure, meaning eventually the card just stops working at some point in time so that you can repurchase the card. There are ways around it, but homebrewing with lazy DSi has been proven to be safe and so is homebrewing a 2DS and 3DS with custom firmware only until recently. 
As for price, it's a good deal at first glance, but if you homebrew your system, which is free, the only money you'll be spending on is the micro SD. You can pick up a 64 gigabyte card for seven bucks, which is half the cost and eight times the amount of storage. Or for a few dollars more, you can get a 656 gigabyte card, which is more information than you'd ever need. But the main question is, is it worth getting a 482-in-1 DS cartridge in 2023? No, with a big asterisk. There are many more updated ways to play custom ROMs on a DS or 2DS, 3DS system. I can see this being a viable option only if you are desperate to play specifically DS games and backwards and you are afraid to update your 3DS or 2DS. Or homebrewing is something you are having trouble with, no matter the reason, and you're eager to just dip into some nostalgia and play some of your favorite games. I do want to warn you, mine only came with DS backups pre-installed, so if you're looking for other titles, you will have to source and load those yourself. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already, consider subscribing. It really helps me keep making these videos for you all. And I will see you in the next video.